Okay, so I uh, choose the topic uh, for this afternoon talking about the cornerstone, right? So basically, of course, uh, I will uh, lay down the reason why I think is enterprise architecture is the cornerstone for the digital enterprise because many organization is trying to be digital and they have tried uh, various ways or various means to make them to become digital. But let's see the reality of the how far or how successful uh, many organization in embarking into the digital transformation. So this is actually the report uh, gathered by the McKinsey, right? So interestingly, only 53% of uh, those organizations who have embarked into the digital transformation have really achieved success. So let's analyze uh, where are the pitfalls, okay? So first, this is quite interesting. So one of the reasons that why many of the uh, organizations that have already embarked into the digital transformation that they didn't achieve the right outcome that as expected. First is that lack of robust enterprise information governance policy. So what do we mean? Because I think one of the reasons is that uh, information that many organizations today have are residing in many systems, many platforms, many databases. And the worst thing is that in many people, right? Could be the people laptop that are not willing to share or in the people memory, right? In the brain. So they keep that information. And of course, if that happened, it's very, very uh, difficult to run the transformation. Yeah, so this is basically the highest reason, 75%. And of course, the second one, also 75% is that getting the right information. If it is also related, yeah, because what happened is that the information is that I don't know who I should get the information. I heard that our organization, our team, or one of the departments should have that information, but how do I get that? And after that, after I get that information, who will need that information in my organization? So that is basically uh, the challenge that I typically face. Right? So basically, if that happened, and of course, everything is still running in silo. So whatever effort that uh, we have put into the digital transformation, back to square one again, right? Silo of information, silo of system, silo of uh, process and the department and etc. Then the next one, of course, resilience of paper instead of digital media. So I think this is talking more like the people of our age, right? So our age means those, I think, who are above 40, they are used to the so-called paper and they think like, you know, if you deliver a consulting services, if the deliver if the deliverable doesn't exceed 100 kilograms, I'm not willing to pay. So they expect like thick, very thick document, they expect to be some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, many, many Microsoft Word, Excel that they can print out, right? So these are also the so-called the hindrance for the organization to embark into the digital transformation because the word digital means is a paperless and everything can be accessed anywhere, anytime. So the same thing with the evolution of enterprise architecture because I have uh, come across many organizations are still using Excel and PowerPoint and Microsoft VCO in their doing the architecture. So, so it is also a hindrance on the uh, so-called delivering the outcome, the value of uh, enterprise architecture to the organization. And I think the next one is migrating uh, data from legacy system into more modern modern technology because many of uh, so-called uh, information that are stored in the system, especially if you are organization already more than 30 years, somewhat we call it legacy, right? So legacy, perhaps the system is still running, but nobody supporting it or the vendor that are providing that platform already uh, gone or perhaps acquired by another company. And of course, because of that, the information remain there, right? It's very, very difficult to extract. Yeah? So these are the typical challenges. It's 59%, almost 60%. And the next one is about training, uh, talking about competency. And this is very, very important because when you do the transformation, actually they have a lot of components of the uh, workforce transformation. And talking about the workforce transformation, uh, until today, I also come across uh, quite a number of the incident. I will call it incident uh, because that the person actually is coming from the big, large organization. But however, their bosses don't believe in the providing people with the training. Because the bosses believe, I hire you as a professional, you should have gained or you should have acquired this skill. So not coming to my organization and I, then I need to train you. So this is also a very, very uh, so-called uh, uh, disturbing fact uh, that I come across that. I said, how can they be this listed company, big company, yet they are not willing to invest in the people uh, development? Uh, because of that, of course, transformation project not going anywhere. And of course, the next one is lack of executive buy-in because they said, oh, transformation, leave it to IT people. Right? So the, the, the business people uh, basically let go of the uh, execution on the transformation to the IT people, which is also not right because 
you can see that the business and technology actually need to have the equal uh, stake in ensuring the success of the transformation. And the last point in number eight is the IT bottleneck. So not bad, it's one third. Yeah? So one third of the IT people are still not ready, but I think two third are not the reason. So meaning not bad huh? because in the last, uh, I think 10 years, especially uh, 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 during the COVID time, many IT already gone through the uh, modernization. Huh? So these are the eight reasons that why uh, many of the digital transformation today are still, are still not achieving the outcome that is expected. So let me now put the context on the uh, cornerstone uh, of enterprise architecture for the organization. Yeah? So I think cornerstone basically is the fundamental part on which something depends on. So later I will be addressing this on the beta book. Right? So I'm not sure how many of you have uh, heard on the business technology architecture body of knowledge. So this is basically also is a cornerstone, something that are very, very important that need to be laid down first because without this uh, so-called beta book or cornerstone, on it, the building will not be erected, uh, will not be so-called uh, hold the, 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 the pressure of the uh, erecting the building. Yeah? The second part is, I think, is about the uh, is about the two things overlap, right? So when you talk about cornerstone, is that basically there are two things that giving a pressure, and you need to connect and balance the pressure so that the, the cornerstone itself can hold the heavy building, right? So what are the uh, two things that overlap? So actually, I am already a a, a so called uh, provided the hint on the business and technology in integration. So this business technology integration are very very important and key in today uh, driving the transformation. So the third one basically is that uh, in all the cornerstone, they are typically got four, right? So you cannot have just one cornerstone because one cornerstone cannot hold the building. So typically got the four cornerstone that to hold the building, right? Of course, if you argue that, hey, some of the building is triangle. Okay, uh, triangle is three, but typically it's building is squarish, uh, uh, four. So four, I can relate this to the four architecture domain, right? Which is business, information, software, and infrastructure architecture. And the other aspect on the cornerstone is that uh, there's a capstone. Huh? So cornerstone at the bottom, and there will be the one at the capstone at the top. So the capstone actually is uh, providing the alignment, the alignment of the building so that it provides the pressure to the entire of the building so that the building can uh, so-called uh, stand still. Right, can uh, basically can stand the weather, can stand the 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 the, the turmoil and etc. So the capstone is very very important, and I'm here uh, actually uh, relating this to the TOGAF EA framework and Archimedes EA language that I will describe uh, in the in the uh, yes yeah, next section. So of course the question now is, do we architect our digital transformation? Right, many organizations have done the transformation, but do we architect? That is, I think, the key message of what I am trying to convey. And of course, the answer is, many of them said, do we need to architect our digital transformation? I thought I already set aside 30 million to uh, execute digital transformation. So this is something that, uh, that we need to uh, ponder and we need to think through about who is architecting our digital transformation. Because digital transformation is the continuous uh, journey. And of course, someone need to have a blueprint and how uh, each of the entity are interrelated, interrelated and interconnected. And of course, we need to know the impact of the transformation that we are going to execute with the existing uh, entities or the, the existing uh, domain. Yeah? So we need some sort of architecture for transformation to be successfully executed. So uh, before we talk about the uh, EA as the cornerstone of how EA can help in the digital transformation, let me introduce you the so-called, what we call it, uh, Box. Huh? So Box stands for the Business Technology Architecture Body of Knowledge. So this is already about coming to 20 over years, right? So this is something not new. So the, the, the development uh, took place 20 years ago. So uh, ISA uh, categorized the so-called the skill pillars. The first skill pillars that but the bottom, I think if you can see, is what it is called business technology strategy. So this is something very, very important to connect business and technology. And this concept actually already happened like, uh, you know, 20 years ago, they already uh, so-called uh, predicted that business technology strategy need to be integrated. And I think it is getting popular now when we go into the digitalization. But when we talk about digitalization, definitely business and technology strategy need to be merged. There isn't anything, oh, this is business strategy, this is technology strategy, no such thing anymore in the digital context today. Yeah. And of course, the next one, the, the next, the next pillar, which is called a human dynamic. Yeah. So human dynamic is also very, very important because human dynamic is basically telling us that in fact, 
up to 80% of the architecture work dealing with human. We don't deal with system, we don't deal with the database, we don't deal with the uh, hardware or software, but we deal 80% with the human. Because it's about addressing the stakeholder needs and what actually a human, like our customer, our business user, what they are trying to do. So enterprise architecture is trying to address that. And the next one, of course, is design. The design means talking about the model. How do we communicate our architecture, right? So the beta book already addressed this as a one of the key pillars, right? The next one is the quality attribute. So quality attribute, I think now to, today talking about security, about maintainability, about availability, all about the utility. Uh, it is very, very important as well in the context of the today uh, digital um, uh, digital transformation. Last but, last but not least, actually about IT environment. So IT environment is talking here about project management, about the uh, IT service, about all the governance. So what are the things need to be in place for IT to function correctly? So all these are five pillars. And of course, they got the specialization on the software architect, infrastructure architect, information architect, business architect. And solution architect is the uh, architect that you assign into the project. Right. So when you assign architect into the project, the, the project three months or six months, it's called a so-called solution architect, right? So basically, everyone uh, wearing a different hat. And of course, they got what they call it chief architect of enterprise architecture office. So enterprise architecture office basically is the uh, uh, team or the, the team of architects that run the architecture activity. So this is basically the, the pillars on the beta book. Let's see how this being translated in today's context. Huh? So five years ago, I saw a transform just now the pillars and the specialization into what they call it uh, uh, a beta book uh, value uh, model, right? Engagement model. So here, basically, uh, you can go to this uh, website, the ISA Home website. You can see the same diagram that I show you. And each one of them actually uh, represented with a canvas, right? Canvas or cut. So in our momentum, if those who have already trained in the TOGA or in the architecture training, it's called the viewpoint. So ISA already created a pre-populated uh, viewpoint that we can use to do or to execute our architecture activities to deliver value of technology and of course to support transformation. So let's just now understand uh, so-called uh, 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 driving force on the what sort of uh, outcome that uh, uh, is expected when you apply the beta book in your organization. First, I think we want to become a thought leadership, right? So we need to think about how we can imagine, right? And then become achieved and we maximize. So maximize means how can we grow into the next <clears throat> higher maturity. So this is basically a thought leadership uh, transformation. And the second one, of course, we cannot deny that customer is the one that giving us the air, right? If the lung means we need the air, if it's the customer. So we really need to focus on the what sort of uh, services that we can uh, improve, right? What are the customer complaint? And I think if you see on the opportunities around us, in many businesses, I think this is a, a low hanging fruit, right? But unfortunately, Many uh, businesses are still ignorant, right? They still are, are, are providing that, you know, they think like the customer need them more than the, uh, they need the customer, right? So this is basically shifting the focus into how can we empathize with the customer? How can we map their journey so that they become loyal to us and of course, give us more business. And of course, the heart of the business is actually the business itself, right? So we need to be able to uh, develop a strategy and we need to know, to understand the model and what the capability required so that we can provide the transformation, support the transformation, and of course, uh, provide uh, innovative goods and services to our customer. And of course, we also need to take care about our employee, right? Our digital workforce uh, transformation, which is what I think just now uh, I mentioned that the important and one of the, I think, two reasons why many transformation projects did not success today, right? Because uh, the management believe that, you know, the people are there already, I hire them, they should know everything. Okay, so this is basically the assumption. And I don't hear this from one company, many, many company. They told me that I, I, Aaron, I before I hire them to join my team, I they've already acquired this skill. So I don't think they need this type of training. I said, wow, you know, I wish I can be uh, uh, the person like you, right? So this basically the management have a super brain, right? But I don't know whether real or not, but the team actually struggling. So the team, some of them, I know, I, I, I met them during the training. They tell me, oh, my boss don't support this. I, in fact, pay my own and I took my leave. Wow. I said, for your company? Yes, for your company. I said, hopefully one day you can take over your boss job. <laughs> this is my wish, right? But it's happening, right? Digital workforce is so important that, you know, we we, we cannot neglect the, the, the building the competency of our uh, team, right? Because they are the ones who are going to execute the job. They're going to provide good service to customer. They're going to provide thought leadership and support the business. 
And the next one, of course, digital operation. So digital operation is very, very key because how do we connect a various uh, ent entity? How do we know the value stream? How does the impact of my department when I change particular process, how does that impact which other department in my organization? be internal and external so we need to look at the transformation as a whole right but last but not least is actually digital information i think digital information transformation has been uh, highlighted just now one of the two reasons as well why the transformation never successful because people uh the information are silo information are everywhere right of course now talking about the ai the ai is coming ai is real but the problem is that many of the organizations are not ready. Their information basically is not there. Many of the, of, of the information is on the people head, right? The people head is the worst ever, right? Because imagine uh, you want to get the information for the particular person and the person can tell you, Aaron, sorry, even your boss, boss don't have access. So forget about you. So it's very, very difficult to, to break through. That's why you need to have some sort of framework to break this uh, a silo. And of course, let's look at the uh, uh, number one, right? What do you mean by fundamental part? So I think just now we talked about the architecture practice are very, very fundamental. Huh? First thing, I think we're talking about operating model. So how do we operate, right? So how do we know about uh, what sort of products, what sort of governance, what sort of the repository that we need to be in place? Because enterprise architecture now today is moving towards a digital repository, right? It's no longer Excel and PowerPoint because it's impossible to query or to understand the impact by using Excel and PowerPoint, right? So we need to know about all the life cycle, about the program, the pattern, and etc. The next one, I think the value. How do we deliver value? Because with the adoption of enterprise architecture, our IT should turn as the profit center instead of a cost center. So we need to know how we do how do we present the outcome how do we present the the, the value proposition how do you re, uh, uh, represent uh, our architecture as a roi as a profit center the next one i think on the people model right so how do we engage our stakeholders what are the people that are required and what are the skill they require right it's unlikely tell me you can hire the architects uh, on the job uh, market out there just almost impossible right if there is i've been hiring them because I am searching all these architects in uh, across uh, Asia, but cannot find, right? So the only way is that to hire the potential uh, people that can be trained to become architects, right? So we need a lot of the training and the coaching and on the job uh, uh, guidance. The next one, of course, architecture model, right? Talking about how do we present our architecture in terms of the enterprise, the landscape, our business, our information, our software, our infrastructure, and the solution. The next part is more on the uh, what are the thing that or two things that overlap, right? So let's just borrow the principle from this uh, 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 beta book. The first one is innovate, the second one is transform, the third one is utilize, and the fourth one is measure, right? So innovate, innovate means we need the business need and the customer, the, the intersection uh, between digital customer and the digital business. We need to have some sort of innovation. We cannot stop to where we are now. The, we need to continue innovating. Okay, the next one is the transformer. So the transform is between the business and the workforce. So of course, in order for transform a continuous transformation culture, the people need to be trained, they call it need to be scaled up, it need to be a retrained, reskill, etc. Right. So if it, it is a never-ending journey, and also the business to evolve. And the next one is utilize. So we need to utilize the existing technology. So we need in order for us to know that which technology appropriate to our environment is that. We need to know about where we are. We need to know our business. We need to know our uh, 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 operation. We need to know our customer so that we can adopt the right technology. And the next one, of course, we need to measure them, right? How do we know that we are successful? Of course, many organizations, is they're looking at their revenue, right? At their sales, basically customer satisfaction index. So this is something uh, very, very important. Uh, uh, there are two things that overlap uh, in the architecture itself. So the third one is more on the domain, right? I think the domain is very obvious. There are four architecture domain in general. Of course, you can add to a security, you can add to solution, etc. So typically architecture domain referring to this business architecture. So business architecture basically to understand the landscape of the organization, right? How the strategy, how the motivation, how the processes are and the capability are interlinked. Then after that, we need to know what our information required, right? How we can so-called uh, capture the information and structure them properly so that when the AI uh, engine coming in, right? You adopt the AI engine, then you can uh, so-called make use of your information. Otherwise, it's just another hype because, you know, at the end you blame on the AI engine, but actually it's nothing wrong with the AI engine, but especially something wrong with your data because your data is nobody can understand, right? If you human cannot understand, you think by putting AI, they, they can help you? You can't. Right. 
So this is very, very important. And the next one, of course, software, how we connect various applications and the infrastructure itself. So we need to provide a robust, of course, now talking about the cloud virtualization. So all these need to be in place, yeah? the four cornerstone that for the uh, 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 robust building. The next one on the capstone, right? So the capstone is the basically is some uh, the last stone, right? That you put to give pressure, equal pressure to the rest of other building block, so that so that the building can uh, so called uh, last, right? So this basically talking about the togaf. Some of you I believe have already taken uh, a togaf concept. So this basically you can see here that uh, they got a uh, quite number of the circle, right? From A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And the requirement management, the center part is where you have all the information as the single source of truth. Yeah. So let me just highlight. So typically in the preliminary, you want to know who are the sponsors and the stakeholders. So like the building is the building owner. Then after that, of course, you want to know their vision, mission, and the strategy. So what, what actually the driving force of their initiative. So we need to know this from the perspective of the why do we uh, need to go through this transformation. Then the next one, we need to understand the gap. So once we understand what the uh, senior management trying to do, we need to understand what are the gaps or in another word, jobs to be done in our business. Then we also need to know jobs to be done in our information, jobs to be done in our application, and jobs to be done in our infrastructure, right? So once we consolidate all the jobs to be done, we put that into the portfolio and the projects. So this are typically when we architect our transformation. Otherwise, you may skip ABCD, you go straight into the consolidation of the project portfolio by gut feel. Gut feel means if I feel good, I think I want to do five projects, right? And then next week, actually I feel better. I want to cut the budget, I reduce just two projects. right? So many of the so-called uncertainty in the transformation when you don't have the architecture. But if you follow this process, then your uh, candidate of a portfolio or project are very solid. Because why? There is an architecture study. And there is a so-called stakeholders that are supporting this. And there is the fact that this is where we are and where we want to head for the target state. The next one, of course, the list of the project. Then we do implementation and, and if there's any changes, right? I think the middle part is where the digital EA repository playing a critical role. Because without the proper digital EA repository, is no way we know about all just now I mentioned about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, right? We cannot link all the Excel file and the physical file to give us the answer. It's just no way. Huh? So because today we are moving towards uh, digitalization. So let me just uh, clear the air. I think by now uh, some of you may be thinking, what is actually enterprise architecture? Is it a network diagram, right? Because uh, many of the uh, uh, team that I talk to, oh, architecture, uh, let me call my network engineer. I said, what? Right. So basically, they have no clue what is enterprise architecture. So let let me just uh, clear the, the definition now. So basically, the enterprise architecture is the process, right, of translating business vision and strategy. So who hold the business vision and strategy in your organization? Okay, definitely key stakeholders into effective enterprise chain. What is enterprise chain? Is transformation by what? By creating, communicating, and improving key principles and models. So basically, we need to know that how we can evolve our transformation journey. And, and describe our enterprise future state and enable its evolution, right? So evolution means we, we know that we will be changing and we are not changing one time and we change many, many times, right? So by having enterprise architecture, we are ready to embark into the future state, right? And of course, this is another uh, 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 description, basically to describe the future state of an enterprise and guide the rapid change to reach the future state. So in, uh, in short, if your organization never changed, so you are happy with your job and basically you have no much thing to do, I would recommend you stay in the job for as long as possible because that job will be very, very rare, right? Now many of the organizations have oh, so many things to do. So how do we uh, manage our rapid change? This is where you need enterprise architecture. So let me just highlight on the four capability of the enterprise architecture. First, I think architecture needs to support the strategy. It's very, very important because the strategy without the architecture basically is, is just... Uh, you cannot discover or you cannot measure what you have you're going to implement, right? It's just a PowerPoint slide, okay? Architecture uh, uh, with strategy without the architecture. And the next one, of course, the portfolio or the initiative is very, very important because you're going to assign the money into this portfolio. You're going to assign millions of dollars. So how do you know if without the architecture that you think it will be, it will go smoothly? It's no way. And after that, when you execute the project, so how do you know that they are building a robust project that when I have some changes, I can change it quickly? You need to also have to have the architecture in place inside the project. And of course, after life, right, when you go live. So we need to have architecture to support a solution delivery. Because without this, without this I think um, uh, architects, uh, uh, you know, organization is just doing uh, uh, not optimized, right? You're doing, uh, uh, because of this, I think you need to hire more people, 
right? You need to, uh, you know, uh, structure team, etc. But it will never go anywhere, lah. Because if you talk about architecture, you don't have a, a, a big pictures, a holistic picture, or connected pictures of your organization. Now, I think talking about the Gartner year predict, right? So I think this is the Gartner year predict 2024. I think we are now in August, right? So it's still relevant. So Gartner issuing year on year on the Gartner year predict, right? So let me just uh, highlight on the 2024. It's very interesting, huh? E the Gartner says that EA and franchising deliver new value. What do you mean by franchising? Okay. So let me uh, just highlight the word franchising, right? This one I taken from the uh, Wikipedia. Basically, it's a strategy for a quick and rapid business expansion to tap on proven know-how, right? Proven SOP. And of course, successful business model from the master franchise. So basically, is that what you need, just invest, right? I don't say spend, invest. And typically, you will make money in most of the franchise, proven franchise model. Okay. So the same thing now for enterprise architecture. And of course, I want to highlight here, Actually, the concept of digital EA started 2013. So it's coming around 10 years, right? Uh, uh, 10 years that digital EA adoption are there because uh, from 2013, I think many of the enterprise architecture are using a lot of platform, no more Excel or PowerPoint. And when you talk about franchising EA, right, means the core EA team can have rapid expansion on the EA coverage and adoption for the entire line of business. So basically, enterprise architecture covering end-to-end -end from your chief uh, executive office, from your strategy office, from your board of uh, director office, from your finance uh, team, from your marketing team, from your sales team, from operation teams, from your support team, all covered with the enterprise architecture, right? So this is the concept of the uh, Gartner EA predict, right? Of course, some of us say, Aaron, I don't even have EA. So how about this? Of course, you need to start somewhere, right? <laughs> because basically is that the time will not wait for us, right? So, I mean, uh, uh, the benefit of EAS has been proven, okay? They got so many uh, case study, and of course, so many failed case study as well. And I analyzed that those who fail case study, actually, they don't even have the competency. They don't even have the skill. They just hear, oh, EA is good. I just want to do EA, right? But you need to do, uh, EA is basically, is the endless journey. It's the endless school, and it will never end. The journey with never, without ending. So we need to be get ready uh, when we embark into the enterprise architecture. And of course, how franchising facilitates strategic EA in the organization, basically is that when we have a risk, you know, uh, we got, of course, now talking about uh, a cyber risk and et cetera, we need to have the information. We need to have the dashboard, right, to prepare that. So this is where the, the, the risk uh, EA can provide, right? And then for those uh, investment, which technology, uh, which initiative that I need to put my money in, right? You need to have like even the banking, they got the uh, financial analyst. So enterprise architecture can provide as a financial uh, uh, advisor to the team, to the organization which which uh, initiative that I should invest first and of course technology management which portfolio that I need to look at and then enterprise architect itself which capability that I need to focus at for this uh, year and uh, you know what what project portfolio and then the solution architecture uh, a blueprint that I need to have and of course we're talking about uh, digitalization talking about the CIO office, they want to know all the ongoing in-flight project and then which our spending, which our end of life, our end of support, right? And of course, all the business strategic planning, right? In terms of the uh, our customer officer, our business architect, and also the entire portfolio of the organization, right? Because it is answerable to the senior management about our transformation, about where we are, and then what are the upcoming uh, project and what are the in-flight project and et cetera, yeah? So, this is uh, uh, the next perspective on the how enterprise architecture as the North Star, right? So what do we mean? It provides navigation. So basically, navigate towards the target state. So it's like a GPS. Lah. You may be lost, you may be the wrong turn, but it will still navigate you back to the right track yeah? if you have a proper uh, architecture in place. And of course, guide us to achieve the goal. Yeah? And then, of course, dependable because they have enterprise map, you know, like the GPS tell us that you need to trust that, you know, why they route it to this way because I think this is the best way to achieve, uh, uh, to reach the target in the shortest possible time in our transformation journey. Yeah? And of course, to realize the success, right? So how can we architect transformation journey successfully? And of course, this is uh, something uh, quite uh, critical as well, right? So our transformation, if you map, I'm not, I'm not so sure whether you agree on these pictures, right? So this is actually uh, not my pictures that I got this from the LinkedIn, but you know, it's quite interesting. This is, could be you know, one of our uh, organizations that we have been uh, embarking in the digital, digital transformation. Uh, basically, continue, re continuously renovating the house, right? You cannot move in because why? Keep changing. You want to change the roof, you want to change the window, you want to change the pillar. It's continuous uh, for many years, 
right? So you can't even move in, but you got the project and at the end, of course, new management coming, they said they abort and abolish this building, right? And of course, you have seen these pictures, it's partially aligned. And I come recently come across, there's the real uh, uh, railway development that is totally misaligned in everything, right? Of course, there's a saying that if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. It's by Benjamin Franklin. But I think I want to uh, rephrase in the today context, it's like, we need to architect our digital transformation for a successful journey, right? So without that, I don't think we can execute uh, digital transformation successfully. It's just yet another project with the title digital or there's a word transformation, but actually no different than 20 years ago project that uh, I used to do, right? And of course, how do we now uh, architect our digital transformation journey? Of course, we can you look at the uh, readiness, right? You look at the discovery. Then after that, we do alignment. And last but not least, we can do uh, so-called innovation, right? How do we innovate? So they got the proven uh, journey, right? And then, uh, yeah, and uh, I think I'm uh, running out of time. So I will just uh, wrap up in the next slide. And of course, you can get this slide and you can study this um, uh, information. So let me now uh, continue with the, uh, uh, my last slide, basically showing you the video and after I end here. Hi, welcome to ATD's Digital Enterprise Architecture Upskilling and Reskilling Programs. As you know, enterprise architecture is a strategic discipline that requires the involvement of key stakeholders from various facets of an organization to ensure its success. This includes stakeholders such as CXOs who define the business and technology strategy, as well as people from IT and business departments who are involved in requirements and IT solution delivery. Among these, there are a group of architects who play a crucial part in shaping the overall architecture. There are five main architect roles. The business architect creates and refines business architecture and owns business technology strategies. He is a digital strategist who knows technology and business. The information architect creates and refines information architectures and owns the data dictionary or taxonomy governance. She is an information strategist and designs the information structures to support the business. The infrastructure architect creates and refines infrastructure architectures and owns the server topology, network infrastructure, and data center environment to ensure business continuity plan. He is a technology strategist and designs the technology landscape to support the business. The software architect creates and refines software architectures and owns the application components and connectivity. She is an application strategist and designs the application patterns to support the business. The solution architect creates and refines solution architectures and owns the system implementation governance. She is an IT strategist and designs the architecture solution for the system development and implementation to support the business. Now these architects possess four areas of competencies, framework, tools, skill set, notation. Let's illustrate the four areas of competency in the context of cooking. In enterprise architecture, frameworks give guidelines on how to set up an enterprise architecture office. The Togef and Zachman Enterprise Architecture Framework are some examples. Like the cooking equipment and utensils, in enterprise architecture, we also use tools to facilitate the modeling of organization and develop the digital enterprise architecture blueprint. With tools, all artifacts and components of enterprise architecture can be connected, and it provides a connected view for organization. The example of common tools in the market are Biz Design, BOC, Adoy, and Adonis, and Orbus Infinity. While the recipe gives you step-by-step -step instructions, it also assumes that you know how to cook. With the same recipe, different people might produce different results. Those who are more culinary experienced will have better results. Similarly, in enterprise architecture, an architect needs to have the relevant skill to carry out the jobs. The ISA Business Technology Architecture Body of Knowledge, in short BetaBoc, has the most comprehensive skills defined for all domain of architects. The notation is the universal measurement for cooking. Any recipe will use universal measurements. For example, <laughs> liquid will be measured in ML or salt in teaspoon. For enterprise architecture, the open standard for notation is called the Archimate, which is an open language under the open group. With all the skills in mind, the upskilling and reskilling program will help you to build your career with enterprise architecture. If you would like to start embarking on the enterprise architecture journey as an aspiring architect, you may want to start with the fundamental skills 
in business IT alignment using the enterprise architecture concept. The Business Technology Requirement Architecture, or BTRA, in short, is a course that demonstrates the key benefits and strategic values of integrating IT architecture into a business by blending best practices in business requirement architecture. The architecture competency strives to develop the competencies based on the five foundational pillars of ISA Betabach to distinguish key architecture concepts and apply industry frameworks to define the business IT capabilities. The outcome is that you will understand how to align IT solutions with the organization's business goals. If you need to practice any architecture domain and would like to advance to the next level of specialization as a practitioner architect, you may want to look into the Enterprise Architecture Corps and one of the five EA <coughs> specializations, such as business, information, infrastructure, software, and solution architecture. In addition, Business Technology Strategy is a course that align communication across business units and implement effective technology strategies, which is a critical skill for all practitioner architects. To set up an enterprise architecture office, you need an EA framework. One of the most widely adopted EA framework is the Open Group TOGAF. This course allows you to learn to streamline EA design across domains with a unified framework. Last but not least, the Archimate EA Foundation and Practitioner helps you understand the principles and concepts of EA notation. The learning outcome as a practitioner architect is that you will be able to develop the architecture blueprint by mastering EA framework, tool, skill set, and notation. If you are leading a transformation team and running the enterprise architecture office, there are two certifications that you can be awarded with. The ISA CETA professional certification is conducted through an online or in-person experience-based interview by peers, assessing candidates' architecture and industry expertise. It provides credibility and assurance to employers that CETA professionals are able to practice as successful architects on the largest projects or programs. CETA Distinguished Certification is bestowed upon top business and technology architects, validated by a community of practicing architects through a professional association by passing a board of four reviewers and a moderator. Finally, there is the TOGAF Enterprise Architecture Leader Course. This course ensures that the architects possess knowledge and understanding of how to establish an enterprise architecture capability based on established best practices. The learning outcome is that you will be able to lead the EA team and develop digital strategies to achieve organizational goals. So, whether you're an aspiring architect, a practitioner architect, or an architect leader, there's a seat at the architect's table for you. Embrace the journey, elevate your skills, and become the maestro of enterprise architecture. All right. Thank you so much.